VR is growing as we speak, and it's getting new and exciting features each day, and it's only getting better uh, as it advances. And it's a lot of potential to share something that would not be normally shared before. We're giving you an experience that you're used to, but we're putting it in like a different perspective, right? So it kind of just reminds you that everything's not always the same. You can kind of switch it up and get a new take on something that you're probably already used to. It gives not only artists, but the fans of that artist an opportunity to view their artists up close and personal. For us, it's um, this is a new way to experience music. Um, and we're embracing the idea that you shouldn't be afraid to change something really old. So people have been listening to music forever. And we're trying to say, how can you listen to music differently? Hi, my name is Ben McCrimmon. I'm the a executive of Mac. My name is Ryan Rodriguez and I'm the event planner for Machina. My name is Gavin Massey, I'm the audio lead for Machina. My name is Brendan Fitzgerald, uh, I'm one of the co-founders and executive producer of Machina. Machina is a virtual reality music festival where we have taken selected acts uh, from local Toronto musicians in local iconic Toronto venues and filmed them using 360 cameras and then built a VR space for people to experience a music festival um, based around local Toronto music. We bring the show to you beyond a YouTube video or like watching it on your phone. It's not the same experience. We bring you closer to that than you would have been. So that's what makes Makana relevant for not only fans but for artists they can now connect with their fans in a way that they couldn't before my task to scout out uh, potential artists negotiate contracts and make sure that our artists had everything they need to be successful for the show so we specifically focus on toronto artists who want to showcase the music and talent of the city we got a broad spectrum of uh, different genres and a great group of people together. We had the hip hop night, the unplugged folk night, and a rock night to finish it up. And uh, this really showed the different kind of music that you might see if you're going out on an average Friday night in the music scene of Toronto. I had to make sure that wherever we did host the shows would fit the genre and the atmosphere that each artist was going for. So that included working really closely with our A&R to make sure that we we're all on the same page. Uh, it involved a lot of contract writing, speaking with venue owners, getting prices from them, and seeing where we could kind of cut deals to make sure it suit us, but also brought in a profit for them. The hardest part of my job was working with the venue owners to meet the needs that they had, but also meet the needs of the artist. My main focus was the VR and uh, 360 aspect of the entire festival. We are working with very new technology. Uh, so the toughest part about what we had to do is staying on top of like what's happening in the VR world. The technology is constantly changing and updating because it's completely user created. You need to be focused on how can it help us or how can we get around it because it might bog us down. Recording the audio, especially for some of the bigger artists, uh, like the full bands, was a huge challenge. We wanted to record them in a full band mix, but we also wanted to add an element of uh, being in the venue itself. We would put up um, different mics in the venues around the room to get that sort of sense of you know, being in the venue that you're at. Having people come up to us during the set and saying, oh, yeah, this sounds really great, or, you know, seeing everybody jam and vibe out and hearing what we put on come to life. And I think that was just the most rewarding thing for me. A uh, big rewarding moment was for our final night. It's our biggest venue, largest acts, when the headliners, Goodbye Honolulu, went on. Uh, I had a moment, a great vantage point from uh, the green room backstage, where I could see just what we really did uh, from the audience really having a great time, and it really hit me that this was what it was all about. It's giving the music to the people. I don't have a good show and I thought uh, it would be very successful. I feel pride in it. When you're at the show and everyone's having a good time, everyone's buying drinks, everyone's enjoying the music, 
and you're just there at the back and seeing it all happen, it's like, okay, we did something bigger than ourselves. And like, that's what it's about. All the paperwork, all the little shit before is worth it. Because in the end, you put on a great show and you essentially created a new experience for people. Different moving pieces coming together and then after the fact being like, it worked. Like I'm looking at this and it looks great. It sounds really good. Um, it's just a, a feeling that is uncomparable. It really gives an ability to share your music with, in a way that's never been done before. And for the music industry in a larger sense, uh, always looking at this from a stance of revenue for the artists, is this a new uh, way that artists can not only share the music, but probably make some money off it by selling virtual reality uh, experiences of their shows that other people wouldn't normally be able to get. People look at VR and they're like this untouchable like technology of the future, but it's really just like an open source DIY community. What I see with like Machina going forward is how can we start using technology that was out of reach before? So how are companies, like big companies who have the money, going to receive our project? And how are they going to accept it and embrace the change and use it to their advantage and the music lover's advantage before other people do it? So you'll get over me and I'll get over you. So you'll get over me.